Hello guys, hello scoundrels, welcome back to the scoundrels den. If you'd like to be a very special scoundrel, and I mean very special, there is a subscription button down below, make sure you hit the bell because you get notifications for all of the videos that I publish. I generally tend to publish every day though, so if you don't want to hit the bell, make sure you just check out my channel every day for a new video. Uh, also, thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel, there's a reference link in the description below. So we're going to be doing something special today. Today we are going to be breaking down some esports because Wild Rift has already had some competitive gaming on the Southeast Asian server at the highest level. Um, we've had lots of great teams from Korea, from the Philippines, etc, etc, playing at a high level of competition for Wild Rift. And one of the things that I wanted to focus on on my channel because of my, uh, I guess, expertise in esports commentary is doing some breakdown and analysis of those games. Now, big shout out to both Wild Rift Competitive and Assassin Day for letting me use the footage for this for this YouTube video. I'm going to link Wild Rift Competitive, their Twitters, uh, and if you don't know Assassin Dave, he's a very big Mobile Legends YouTuber who is doing Wild Rift now. Um, I'll link his social media and his channel in the description below as well. Um, so big shout out to Assassin Dave. He, I, like, I DM'd him on Twitter. I said, dude, I'd really love to use this footage for a video. He's like, dude, go ahead. Just I have no problems with it. And, you know, that is that, that made me really happy. So, um, yeah, I'm going to link their stuff in the description below. Okay, so what we're doing is we are watching the VOD back from uh, Assassin Dave's Trovo stream because this was uh, exclusively um, uh, streamed on Trovo. But we're going to do some analysis of the game. So as you can see, I think from listening, there were four bands. They banned Evelyn, they banned Gragas, they banned Draven, and they banned, I believe, uh, Olaf. Evelyn, absolutely a must ban if you're playing competitive in this meta. She's too good in mid lane and she's a first pick every single time on blue side. So if you're red side, you have to ban her. Gragas makes sense. He's a very, really strong first pick because he's so flexible for the draft. He can go to either Baron lane, mid lane. He can go jungle if you have to or even support. He's got four roles where he can feasibly play. Draven's an interesting one because, as you can see on your screen, the AD carry picks were Kaisa and Misfortune. They were there was no Jin to be seen. Uh, but Draven coming through as a ban, um, I would imagine that was from Aether Rift then because they don't want to play Draven into uh, they don't want to play Kaisa into Draven. Kaisa has better late game scaling than Jin, so maybe that's where they were putting their emphasis. And then the Olaf ban. Olaf is an incredibly strong Baron laner. Um, and so maybe just didn't line up with the Baron lane pick that they wanted to go for. Uh, and I suppose the fact that we have a Wukong and a Kali, I mean, Olaf has good matchups into both of those particular champions, so that makes a lot of sense. All right, we are going to watch the stream. We're going to go into the game, and we're just going to try to break down the action as it goes. I'm only going to do one game, by the way, guys. Um, I know that I would love to do more, but the video would end up being really long. I might end up breaking down further games in the future. This is just a tester to see whether you like it and whether what's being said is interesting. Um, I do apologize if the stream is laggy or, or kind of like poor quality. What Because we don't have a spectator mode, um, what we are seeing is a live stream from the, uh, the actual game, you know, like for, for, from... Um, Yeah, it's not just me. I was just checking that it wasn't me, but I, I'm pretty certain that the uh, the the stream is on for Uzi stream. It's a little bit laggy, so yeah, that's why they switched over. So they switched over to Korea Best Media. Yeah, I wasn't just me. All right, okay. So nothing too crazy happening. I've noticed there's just one defensive ward for the 16B esports squad. Um, they are just defensive uh, defensively warding the entrance uh, around the blue side jungle for Lee Sin. So Lee Sin's a really aggressive jungler. Now he started. There's two different ways to start jungle on Lee Sin. Um, you can start at the Wraiths or the Raptors, like you're seeing the 16-bit esports jungler do right now, or you can start at your buff and go buff to buff, then look to get an early push onto the, the, the scuttle, or even look to go into the enemy jungle. Uh, you just saw uh, Korea best mid make a little bit of an error. You don't really trade very well as an Ari versus an Orianna level 1. Orianna's passive is Clockwork um, Windup, which means her successive basic attacks get stronger and stronger with more magic damage. She also has a much um, more accurate... Uh, first ability, which is command attack. You don't trade well versus Noriana, especially if you miss your spirit orb, which you saw there. But obviously, you can look to be a bit more aggressive once you've got your full kit, which includes your charm and your um, and your foxfire. But in general, yeah. Okay, we're well, moving back over to Uzi. I yeah, I think his uh, I think his uh, stream quality is a little bit lower than the rest of them. But we are just watching them here. It uh, looks like they lane swapped. Um, so this is something that is very interesting, and it's something that you actually saw me do in one of my videos um, recently. 
I'm just checking to see which side of the map that they are on. Oh, actually, it was it was 16 bit esports that actually lane swapped because they're not on the on the dragon side of the map. So you can see that the Uzi and 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 Aether Rift they did they they actually went for the the correct lane, but actually 16 bit went for the lane swap and just turret dived level uh, early levels here. They're they're playing a very league centric meta now. Lane swaps used to be really popular in League PC for the main reason that going 2v1, and if you had a very hard shoving and hard pushing lane, going 2v1 was always going to be favorable for you. Uh, because it allowed you to push the minion wave in, and it allowed you to take the turret more quickly. Taking the turret more quickly allowed you to rotate, you got more gold in your team's pocket, and you were able to snowball. League PC counteracted that by making the top lane turret or the Baron lane turret have more defenses than the bot lane turret. So it was harder to take in a lane swap scenario. And that kind of forced the meta back to 2v2 bot. In Wild Rift, that's not the case. So this is really intelligent from 16-bit esports to go for the lane swap because it makes perfect sense to do so. There is nothing stopping you in terms of game mechanics from making a lane swap happen in a competitive setting. And we're going to switch over to career best, but he's actually landed a charm. Shockwave wasn't ideal. The Spirit Orb comes through and I believe... They end up getting the kill as a beautiful gank from the Lee Sin does get altered away by the Vi and comes Korea best mid, another great charm, knock up, bang, this is too easy for the Korean team. Aether Rift being right ridden across the map right now. Honey Badger with a great roam as well. That is beautiful play and that all came from the pressure that they put in the top lane. Great rotations from this Korean team, 16-bit. They're now pushing onto mid lane turret. Now, mid lane turret, you can see why they're putting so much pressure onto it. And I'm going to tell you why mid lane turret is so important. We talk about this in league esports all the time. Mid lane turret is the one turret that opens up the map. There's a big engage from Wukong here. It doesn't have the damage, though. Charmed and the turret. Oh, no. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. But I'll go back to my mid lane uh, uh, turret discussion. There is a reason that mid lane turret is so important on the League of Legends map, and that's because it is the one turret that offers safety from the uh, the enemy invading your jungle constantly. Look at, I, in fact, I, I don't know if I can pause the map. I might pause this and just kind of talk to you about it right now. Right. Okay. Look at the map. Look at the two, there's two extra entrances to the blue and red side jungle that would usually be covered and been granted vision of by a mid lane turret. You can just see um, above Oriana on the map right now. Um, that is where the, there are two extra entrances just on the other side of the river that take you towards, it, it, it my, my, okay, yeah, takes you like this towards the blue and red side jungle. Um, that would usually be covered by a mid lane turret. And also behind that, you can see that you have two extra entrances that are a little bit deeper. One goes behind the raptor camp on the red side and one loops um, to where the, the wolves, the entrance to the wolves are. So if you're coming out towards your blue side jungle, you enter the wolves. That, they, those are usually completely inaccessible because they are between two turrets. Once that mid lane turret goes down, those are actually accessible too. So what this allows the enemy to do once the mid lane turret is down, your enemy can get into your jungle and place vision. That's going to keep tabs more easily on where your jungler is. They can look to set up picks and catches in your jungle, which is usually an area of safety for you if you have your uh, outer turrets remaining. And that is going to allow them to have more objective control around things like Baron and Dragon. So that's a really intelligent play from the 16-bit Korean esports team because what it's allowed them to do is now have much more control of the map. That mid lane turret is the single biggest control point on the map, and if that goes down, suddenly the map gets broken wide open. So you can see that we're in a massive, uh, got, you know, we're at a point of a serious advantage here for 16-bit. They're going to try and go for the Drake. They steal doesn't come through. This is desperation from the Vi at this point. I think what I would say is if you're not comfortable taking a fight around the Dragon, um, and you're not comfortable in winning it. The first dragon is not that big of a deal. Like it's it's, it's a it's a decent deal in in Wild Rift, more so than in 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 competitive PC play. But the first dragon is not worth losing your life over. They just gave up four kills for an attempted steal on the first dragon. Go back, farm your lanes, give up the first dragon, scale up and get to an item an item break point where you can maybe look to contest for the second, maybe even the third if you have to, or even more importantly, in some cases, Baron Nasher. You can see pings are now being put down for Baron, um, at least to get vision control around the area for 16-bit as it spawns in one minute. The way that you would you would really just capitalize on this game, because obviously 16-bit are completely dominant from that lane swap that they made happen earlier on, is now just get vision in the red side jungle of the enemy's, uh, the enemy's uh, jungle. 
Then look to threaten Baron. You don't need to start Baron, but if you threaten Baron, the enemy has to come and check, and they're going to be forced into a fight where they are down in gold, down in items, and then you take the fight, you win, and then you take Baron. It's a really simple playbook. It's one of the most simple plays that you can make happen in League of Legends. And honestly, this entire game has been spring uh, springboarded from the lane swap that 16-bit made happen at the start of the game. They got the... the um, the top lane turret, or they took it down low, they rotated mid, they got the mid lane turret, uh, and everybody has been behind from Aether Rift from the very get-go. And this is something that actually I think is super interesting from, from Aether Rift. And you can see they're even threatening the Baron despite the River Scuttler uh, being up. Now, the... I they're starting it, which is interesting for me because obviously that's always a potential. Uh, oh no, it's not, actually not even. It's not even Baron. What am I talking about? I, I I was convinced that they were so far ahead in the game that we were talking about Baron, but we're talking about we're talking about Rift Scuttler. Wow, we are we are actually not that far into the game. We're six minutes. For some reason, I thought we were way further into the game. Um, okay, that was much safer to do. Yeah, you can do Rift. You can do um, Rift Scuttler with with absolutely no uh, no problems. Um, if you're this far ahead, because it's not worth contesting. Rift Scuttler at best is going to get you one tower. Um, and, at, you know, a lot of cases, it will even just get you some plates. Rift Scuttler is not a guaranteed tower take. However, if you're this far ahead, then Rift Scuttler can be a way to force your way, uh, to force yourself onto an inhibitor turret. So the way that you could see 16-bit esports play with this Rift Herald is potentially um, group up, look for a pick, Generate a good minion wave. So, so work with your minion waves. Build up a minion wave in either mid or bottom. Um, I would say the bot lane is probably a good option because you've already taken the first tower. And then find a fight, drop the Rift Herald, push all the way to the inhibitor turret and take the inhibitor turret out. The most important inhibitor turret to take out in this scenario is the bot lane inhibitor turret. And why is that? Because it's on the opposite side of the, 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 the map to Baron. So if you take the bot lane inhibitor turret, you're going to be constantly spawning super minions in the bottom lane, and that is going to allow you uh, to have natural pressure in the lane where you're, um, where you're where, you know, that's furthest away from the Baron. But it doesn't matter because they've got a huge pick in mid lane. I envision that they just drop the Rift Herald here, uh, and they push all the way to the inhibitor turret if they even have to. Um, they might, yeah, they have. They've just dropped it here. So this is, this is what you do with Rift Herald when you're ahead. You, your team groups up, you look for a pick, you get an advantage in a team fight, and you can see the Rift Herald is going to do the majority of the work here uh, and yeah free inhibitor turret they don't care what happens to the rift herald beyond this uh, and again they just took the opportunity to drop it in the mid lane like i said though optimal area is going to be bot lane but mid lane is also good the reason mid lane is good is because when you're trying to control um barum so when you're trying to control the area around the Baron, the one thing that you'll see a lot of people do, as long as their bot lane is in a good state, as long as their bot lane is even or pushing, what they'll always try and do is push the mid lane out because the mid lane out gives them control of the entrances to the river. So pushing the mid lane out is going to allow you to then uh, control the vision around the Baron, er Baron area more uh, more effectively. This game is is absolutely 16-bit esports to throw at this point. There's the, There's... I'm trying to think of a comeback mechanic that, that Aetherith can employ, but 16-bit esports have just been clinical on the map. I, I was only going to do one game, but I feel like I might actually do two, uh, because this has been very, very easy for 16-bit uh, from the get-go. Beautifully executed tactics, and honestly, a lot of this, uh, this hasn't purely come from, from mechanics. What 16-bit have done here has just been a really good strategy. You can see that they've won this game primarily through map play and macro and, and great strategy. And what I love that they're doing here is they are now focusing on that bot lane. They are trying to find an advantageous position in that bot lane because, again, with Baron spawning in a minute, to have the bot lane uh, pushing t t towards the enemy consistently is always going to be um, a really effective way of controlling Baron more, you know, more more uh, aggressively. And because they have two turrets left in the bot lane, they can actually let the bot lane get into a bad wave state for them, and the towers will do the majority of the work to bounce it back. They don't have to worry about their inhibitor turret being threatened by a large minion wave because the the bot lane has, has still got two, or the dragon lane has still got two towers left up and going so they have absolutely no issue now um in just letting that bot lane naturally bounce back through tower pressure and they will out they won't actually ever have to go there themselves and if if anyone from the enemy team shows up to take towers in that lane well they just start barren and that's going to be another way of just turning the knife um and, and ending this game more quickly versus aether rift um compositionally by the way we, we didn't even really have a chance to talk about composition this game because um 
because because honestly uh, the game has been so quick but they've got a great pick potential with Braum and with 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 misfortune uh, sorry with um Ari Leeson is also a good pick so they're really looking to just try and fight and like, isolate someone and blow them up quickly and then take an adv advantageous team fight when they have the numbers to do so uh they also have the Braum which is great when you pick misfortune because one of the biggest counters to misfortune is Braum his alter his his uh, shield can block her ultimate in team fights which makes her feel a little bit lackluster in those scenarios but look at the vision control now in the red side jungle uh, for 16-bit. They've got wards around the red buff, obviously being swept out by Alistair now. That's really good. He knows that he needs to maintain control of that red side jungle as much as physically possible. Uh, and you can now going to see Akali go and threaten that side lane wave. Now, what I would do if I was 16-bit here is I'd let Akali push by herself and I'd just walk over to Baron. Like, I, would, I wouldn't start it, but I'd get vision control around it. I'd clear the vision for the enemy around it. And I'd start to look to threaten this Baron. You can see that Korea Bestman is just looking to either pick someone off on the side lanes here. Um, Akali actually backed here. So now you can see that Wukong has turned up in the bot lane. They're going to go straight to starting this Baron. They have the Misfortune here. They have the Lee Sin here. The only qualm that I have is that they don't have any red side vision control. So they can't really see who's in that red side jungle right now. And, you, and as you can see now, there's been a good ward hop over. Um, the ultimate comes through they do actually get the smite but that was so dangerous from 16 bit they're going to finally catch out disaster who goes down to the akali it is a, a, i think a team fight win primarily just through the fact that they are so far ahead in gold but that was a very risky baron play for me um that could have gone horribly wrong if the smite steal came through from aether rift now fortunately lee sin's smite was good but they they definitely ran that baron on the edge in my opinion they definitely ran that Baron on the edge. That was not the sensible way to play that Baron fight out. With the Baron minions now coming towards the Nexus, they should be able to very easily take down uh, this Nexus and get the first game in this series. It was a very clinical game. Um, for the majority, they really just absolutely steamrolled. Um, and it really just came from that early lane swap. In fact, the early lane swap accelerated the game so much that I thought Baron was spawning bef before we'd even seen Rift Herald, which is crazy, but an incredibly good game from Aether Rift to begin with. And uh, and again, you saw the power of the lane swap in that scenario. So I I'm going to try and jump to... Uh, uh, I might do um, another game. I might do another game. Let's do another game. I'm going to jump to another game. Okay, we're jumping into the final game of the series. I believe it is 2-1 to... Uh, it was it was two one to sixteen bit at this point. Um, the, the the games were a bit choppy and all over the place. But I'm going to do the final game of the series. Um, I don't know what the bands were, but we can have a look and have a look at the the, the team compositions. Okay, so for sixteen bit, they have a wombo combo like this is a, a pure team fight composition right here they have a bit of split push pressure with the yasuo yasuo is a uh, um, a pick that can definitely uh, function in a side lane by himself but as a composition it does it does one thing very well it knocks people up it combos with shockwave and it combos with yasuo ultimate and, and ezreal on the back line is going to be relatively untouched if this team fight is executed properly the way that it works, Wukong dives in, activates Cyclone with the Orianna ball attached to him. They shockwave into Cyclone and Yasuo ults all of them. Then Braum ults them all again so they're knocked up further and essentially the teamfight is won just through pure CC chaining. It's a very, very, very good uh, and very, very well drafted wombo combo team fight, but obviously you have to find those team fights. You look at Aether Rift, they've actually built something that is supposed to counteract that. They've got what we call a 131 composition. Now, whether 131 works well in Wild Rift, that's what I'm interested in seeing in this particular game. Um, you've got a, a Zed and an Akali. They're, they are, they're good in teamfights for executing people, obviously. Uh, but in tr traditional league, you'd have a Zed and an Akali in a side lane, split pushing by themselves because they are much better in the 1v1 scenarios. But, you know, beyond from that, you have got good CC chaining the Alistair combo into Vi Ultimate, um, providing space for Kaiser in teamfights to just pop off. That's potentially what we're looking at here. Um, Mid lane matchups, Orianna should do fine against Zed. Orianna is one of the very safe mid laners that should do relatively fine against Zed, as long as she just does look to prioritize the Zonyas relatively early. Um, Akali versus Yasuo, that's a, a matchup that I prefer for Yasuo. The Wind Wall really shuts down Akali's ability to proc her passive with her uh, first ability, and Yasuo can win that you know, relatively effectively. Plus, he has better sustain, especially if he goes for a Blade of the Ruin King first build, which I've seen a lot of uh, Baron lane Yasuos do. So uh, I prefer the matchup for the Yasuo here for Honey Badger. Um, 
So let's jump into the game and let's kind of talk about what's happening. I think I believe we're following the perspective of Korea best mid again. Um, the reason that we haven't got game sounds on, by the way, guys, is because uh, there is commentary on the Trovo stream for for Dave. So I had to turn them off because obviously I wouldn't be able to talk over the commentary. Okay, it's going to be an interesting game. Again, I think we're only following the perspective of Korea best mid because I think everybody else had problems getting a good quality stream out. I find that Oriana into Zed is a super um, aggressive matchup for Oriana until Zed can start to look to combo. I believe this was before Zed got nerfed as well. So this is before the Zed, uh, the Zed um, uh, Shuriken width nerf. But Oriana bullies melee matchups. As long as you can dodge those shurikens, Oriana is a bully in lane, and it can be quite difficult for Zed to trade effectively. See here? This is what you do as an Oriana. It's why it exposes you to ganks. Oriana loves to be aggressive with the laning phase. You've got Clockwork wind up on your basic attacks, so you're going to want to basic attack Zed as much as possible. And the ball is a great zoning tool. You just throw the ball at Zed, um, and it's a really, really fantastic zoning tool in that respect. Obviously missing a couple of minions here, but Zed is probably missing more. Uh, and again, just trying to deny Zed level and experience. I love this, procking the, the honey fruit early on. He actually, oh, that's really, really clever. Throws the ball over the wall to check if the raptors are there. That gives him information about where the enemy jungle is. And that's actually really important as an Oriana. So now look where she is positioning herself. She thinks that the um, the jungler is on the top side of the map, so she is positioned on the bottom side of the map. Now, actually, it's really interesting. There are two ways to think about doing this. When you position in mid lane, I would usually position um, myself towards the side of the jungle where my jungler is. So if I was career best mid here, I would be sit situating myself on the top side of the, uh, the lane because my jungler is on the top side of the map. So if something were to happen, I could walk towards my jungler and it's more likely they were to have an, they were to have an impact in, uh, in a gank or a counter gank that happened. But I believe that the, the reason career best mid was positioned on the bottom side of the lane is because they they checked the raptor camp saw that it was gone and thought that they were probably in the area and didn't want to get ganked early on because again oriana is a pick that will hard push a lane she's very abusive towards mid lane uh, melee matchups so obviously you just got to be a little careful with your your early lane um positioning as an oriana because you are very susceptible to ganks and especially you don't want to let a zed get too far ahead so again, I'm looking at the the, the the map state right now, and actually this is a standard lane setup. So there were no crazy lane swaps coming out from 16-bit this time around. They've gone, they've opted in for the 2v2 matchup. I quite like the 2v2 matchup here. The reason being is I think I, I think Brawl is a good counter into Alistair in general. It's also a good counter into Kaiser. If you can uh, use your Unbreakable, he's going to look for an all-in, I think. He has got to go up against the barrier. I love this play from Chuli. And, oh, he's missed the Shockwave. I think this could be a problem. Career best mid goes down. The Shockwave dodged out by Chuli on the Z. Beautiful play. Um, again, you, ha you, you, you have to be careful. Zed will look to all-in you at level 5 every time. And career best mid just got 1v1. Like, it's, like Oriana should be fine against Zed. Um, I, think he ha I think he was too greedy on his flash. As soon as Zed got into melee range of me, I am flashing because I lose that every time. So Yasuo is now the target. I think there was a good roam there. Akali picks it up. Alistair actually roamed all the way to the bottom side of the map. Now, Dragon isn't up, so that was a sensible roam from Alistair. If Dragon was up, they might have lost Dragon for that roam because Alistair showing on the bottom side of the map means that the, the Dragon would have been in contention. Now, oh my word, the damage coming out from Korea best onto Korea best mid already is, is disgusting. This is really uh this is really good stuff from Aether Rift. They're just they're utilizing their laning phases to really get ahead of the enemy. Uh and that was a mistake. There was definitely a mistake from Korea Best Mid to go for the uh the play that they went for. Going for the honey fruit rune as well. I I definitely recommend the honey fruit rune if you're playing in lane. In general, I now go for honey fruit rune in, in, all the time. It gives you great sustain. I like that we see um D D D D hanging around on the Braum, just looking for an all-in from the Zed. You can jump onto the Oriana, give her extra resistances, and throw the Unbreakable up to prevent any shurikens from hitting. You can see now that there is pings coming out for the Dragon, but they don't have any vision of the enemy jungler, nor do they have any vision of where... Yeah, see, they're being collapsed on here. I think it's because Honey Badger was rotating over. They are now getting pincered by the, uh, the Aether of Teen. In comes the Engage... Career base mid not being targeted out now. There goes the nice knock up onto the back line. They haven't quite won, but come this. The shockwave not good, but the fight's still going okay. 
As here comes Honey Badger. Beautiful knockup, but he's already used his ultimate. Hard to see what's going on, but honestly, a one for one overall and taking a dragon in that situation, that is a complete steal for 16 bit esports. A complete steal, honestly. He got the Z. Oh, you hate to see it. The, the, oh, you hate to see it. The Ezreal Ultimate hitting the Z while he was backing. Bro, that's a feels bad, man. That shouldn't have happened, though. 16 bit, that was a really, really poor dragon setup. That could have gone very badly for them. Um, they didn't have vision of anybody other than the Kaiser who showed in the top, in the dragon lane, which was closest to the dragon. That was a very risky maneuver to make happen. Uh, but as we've seen from the first game, they're very confident in their smites. Their jungler is a great, good smiter, hasn't lost a smite battle to Aether Rift yet. Um, so maybe they're just confident in their ability to take objectives in a, in a sort of a, a flat 50-50 scenario. And that definitely felt a little bit like a flat 50-50 scenario. Blue Moon doing a huge amounts of damage on this Wukong. Really good play from him. Getting some good vision control around the Rift Herald right now. They're going to try and catch up the Vi. Not going to blow the ultimate as of yet against Shockwave. Not great. Career best mid has not had um, super impactful Shockwaves on this Orianna as of yet. But the game state right now is in favor of 16-bit. And they are looking to focus down this Rift Herald. Now, Ezreal is sitting in the top side. Kaiser could very easily be roaming over here. Have to be super careful. Career base, that best window being targeted out. Gets the Z ultimate on top of him. Great knockup from the Braum, but it will not keep him alive. Beautiful shockwave comes through. The knockup there once more. Akali takes another kill, but Blue Moon will trade back. This Wukong doing work right now, but Kaisa picks up the kill. In the end, though, again, another favorable scenario for 16 bit because despite the fact that it looked like they lost that small skirmish Ezreal gets the first tower of the game Yasuo jumps in onto the Vi gets knocked up here is it going to be enough it's been enough to distract them from the Rift Herald that's all Yasuo was aiming to do Honey Badger really just trying to 1v3 and he is diving and dancing out of that fight beautiful play from Honey Badger and they stop the Rift Herald from engaging that's a bit of an overextension here from Chuli. He won't go any further. Yasuo just heads back to lane. That entire sequence of events saved by Honey Badger himself because somehow 16-bit come out with a tower and the objective still intact. Ezreal's got to be careful. Uh, it looks like Kaiser has gone for... Uh... The problem is we don't have spectator mode, so we don't know what the items everyone's gone for. So, But it looked like Kaiser had gone for first item Guardian Angel, which is what makes sense. That's kind of like the meta for both Jin and Kaisa and Misfortune right now, because Guardian Angels... Oh, no, she's gone for Blade of the Ruin King. That's interesting. Um, not going for kind of like the the, uh, the 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 Guardian Angel start that we see a lot of um, AD carries go for. I think on Kaisa, I do prefer the kind of like the, the Blade of the Ruin King style build. But like Misfortune and Jin, you're expecting them to go for, for the, uh, the GA first. All right. Got another disco. Don't like the positioning of the Orianna here. Immediately gets engaged on once more. Good shockwave this time, though. Keeps herself alive. And actually, this is a great fight for 16-bit. They're getting the Wombo combo working. They secure the Rift Herald. And now Ezreal relatively untouched on the back line. Going to look to try and take out a couple of members. They get the Aether Rift lineup down. And they get the Rift Herald out of this as well. They might just drop it mid. Um, depends on how far they get. Yeah, they're just going to drop it mid. This won't be an inhibitor turret take. But is it enough for them to just go straight for Baron here? Maybe that's what they're looking to do. They're using... The, oh, no, Dragon even. Sorry, wrong side of the map. They're going straight for Dragon. This is another play that you can make as a team. Drop the Rift Herald in a lane. I especially think it's, it's worth it if you can get a tower. Use it as a distraction to get, be able to secure yourself an objective. Sorry, guys, I keep forgetting the map is flicked. I'm too used to League PC where the, the, the Baron spawns on the top side of the map. So yeah, okay, so what they've done was sensible with the Rift Herald. They used it as a distraction. Again, opened up that very important tier one mid lane turret because that's now going to allow them to expand into the enemy jungle. Um, and now taken another dragon. But this was this was a risk-free dragon take. Really, really good stuff from uh, Aether Rift. Going to try and... Ooh, beautiful uh, slow there, but I don't think they're going to be able to track him down. Three members committed to the bottom side of the map, but that's okay for 16-bit right now. I, I actually wish I could talk more about what Aether Rift are doing, but obviously we don't have their perspective, so it's really hard. Um, but they, 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 they don't lose anything by committing to the bottom side of the map here. So 16-bit uh, so, uh, don't lose anything by committing to the bottom side of the map. So good stuff from them. Uh, good macro awareness 
because there's nothing for them to uh to, to lose out on there's no dragon and engage comes through onto the ezreal here big wombo combo onto him he does get taken out very low he will actually use the Zonyas to keep himself alive over the wall as well. Tries to true shot Barrage, but this fight going in favor of Aether Rift right now. You can see the GA is there for the Kaiser, kiting backwards against the Orianna and Aether Rift. Absolutely tear apart. Yasuo is still in the fight though, looking to get a kill onto Uzi or at least pop the GA, and he did. Beautiful play from the Yasuo. Honey Badger really putting his team on his back in some of these fights. He has gone for that Blade of the Ruin King now as well. Gives him a lot of el elongated trading potential in these fights. But the Baron is being threatened by Aether Rift. Very risky Baron play to try and go for right now, but it looks like they're actually going to be able to get it. Can Honey Badger get into the fight quick enough? No, he cannot. They lose the Baron. Beautiful from Aether Rift. Very decisive. Get a big, strong fight. And they know they have the Kaiser with the Blade of the Ruin King, which is very quick at taking down this Baron. Good comeback. That could be the entry, the entry point that Aether Rift needed to get themselves back into this game. Really love that play. Great play from the Philippines team. Um, it was the only play that could have got them back into this game effectively. Honestly, Korea Bestman is not having a good game right now. Caught out once more by the Zed and the Vi. Luckily, I don't think... Is it up yet? I don't think Dragon's up yet. They're just it's, it's not actually spawning, so they're not going to lose anything because of our buff. Losing the Oriana, you might actually lose a significant number of turrets here, and, and Aether Rift are actually going for a split push pressure point. They're keeping the Akali in the side lane with a big Baron wave. They're pushing up with the Vi on the other side lane with the Zed. This is the 131 that I talked about. They're executing on the 131 with the Baron minions. So the 131, when I say 131, I mean we are we have um one split pusher in, in the top lane, one split, split, split pusher in the uh, bot lane, and usually you'd have three uh, of your members committed to the mid lane. Actually gets a 1v1 kill though, Honey Badger. So shuts that down. Here comes the fight. It's actually a, a two versus four in this scenario. The Pulverize does miss from the Alistair. And actually this fight worked out pretty well. They oh, What on earth happened there? Looked like Kaiser just absolutely ran it down. Beautiful pickup and a, a, a completely unneeded pickup here. And... It looks like the Korean team 16-bit are just willing to now push down the mid lane. They have a three-person or a three-man advantage with Honey Badger actually split pushing. Looks like the engage comes through. Good knock-up again. Shockwave does land, and they're actually pulling him out. GA gets popped very low. It was a good defense. Good defense from the Zed here, actually. More than enough that he needed. Uh, it looks like there's going to have to be a reset, though. This reset needs to happen really quickly. Big loss to lose the GA here. Because you losing the GA is going to be really important for this next fight. You've also used the Cyclone, so you don't have the easy knockup for the Yasuo. And also you've lost positional advantage on the Dragon. I would have preferred a setup for Dragon in this scenario. I think it would have been much more healthy and much easier to execute on. But massive credit to Chuli on the Zed. Made a big play to defend against that, uh, that mid lane turret take. All right, you can see True Shot Barrage comes through. They're going to get the dragon. Is the fight going to ensue? They're going to jump on to Honey Badger, who's taken low. Career best mid. Now the next target gets ulted on. He will just go down. Poor execution, honestly, from 16-bit. They kind of threw that small lead that they generated in the mid lane out the window. And they were not able to go and set up with a dragon in time. And unfortunately, ended up giving it away. Aether Rift executing well on a small advantage, like a small comeback that they needed to make happen. They made it happen. Really good play from the Philippines squad. And now that's two neutral objectives in a row that they've taken. They've dropped a load of towers. I think they actually have the tower advantage now. So the gold is probably swinging back in their favor. Great stuff from Aether Rift. Really nice play. Uh, and also they have that scaling potential with the Kaiser too. Um, so I am definitely looking at this next Baron fight as being the game ender. Korea Best Mid has not had a great performance on this uh, Oriana. Been bullied a lot in lane. Some of the shockwaves have been a little bit iffy. Honey Badger um, has been kind of carrying a lot of these fights. I'm yet to see the Wombo combo executed on. Yet to see it happen. That's what I want to see. Um, they still have a strong Ezreal. That's one thing that you have to be aware of. Ezreal is still in a super strong position right now. Oh, so it's tense now. It's tense around this uh, this Baron. I love what Zed's doing here, but are they just going to go straight for the Baron in this scenario? It looks like they are. Zed's trying to set up a sideline, but this, this, this goes down so quickly. Teleport's coming through. The teleport boost is there. Oriana gets knocked out. Is it going to be a smite fight? It is. It's a steal. This time, Aether Rift get the steal, but the fight is actually going what it looks like in favor of 
Can't really tell, actually. I think it's Aether Rift, actually. Aether Rift currently in the lead. But Ezreal on the other side of the wall. Career best mid still standing. Honey Badger by himself has absolutely torn apart the back of the lineup here for Aether Rift. So this team fight went massively in favor. And they are now going to push down mid. Only one Baron buff remaining on the Vi here for Aether Rift. Couldn't see that. I thought that was going in favor of Aether Rift, but it wasn't. 16-bit absolutely tore apart that team fight which was huge for them and they might now even be able to get an inhibitor turret gonna be a bit difficult because the uh, the baron minions are here nice teleport in love the use of teleport boots we don't see it enough in solo queue but it's really good stuff in competitive play and they are going to get the inhibitor turret here that is going to open up a setup for for the um the the elder dragon spawning which is going to be an important elder dragon to consider Looks like the bot lane needs to be dealt with, though. So they are going to send Honey Badger over. I love the fact they're going to just, just secure this River Scuttler. Um, I think Oriana would love to get her hands on... I'm not sure they want to go for the Engage here. I think Oriana would love to get her hands on her Rabadon's Death Cap before that we get this next fight underway. That Rabadon's Death Cap would be a huge game changer in terms of landing a really important uh, Shockwave. She's a little bit far away from it, though, so I don't think it's going to happen before the next big team fight around the Elder Dragon. We'll have to see. Again, the 131 is being executed on here by Aether Rift. You can see it because the Akali always drops down towards that to uh, the bot lane, the bot side of the map. And you see the Zed always pops up on the top side of the map to push those waves in. You don't need to go and take the inhibitor turrets. You just need to generate pressure. But it looks like Korea, the, the Korean team 16-bit are saying, okay, one of the best ways to stop a split push from happening is to group up and either force an engage or force an objective. They're getting some vision control. Um, around the red side jungle they are setting up for this elder dragon this is going to be the game ending team fight you would you would think honey badger has got his ga blue moon's ga is back ezreal has picked up a ga as well career best mid does not have the shockwave sorry does not have the rabadons I have to be a little careful i love what aether rift are doing here they're trying to zone them out of the mid lane the engage coming through though akali may be caught here nice cyclone comes in that's the knock a beautiful combination again as we said in champion select cyclone into yasuo Ulma, into braum ultimate and it is absolutely easy as you like game one for 16 bit they executed on the wombo combo and the timing the chaining of their ultimates is is exactly what makes this composition good and they executed on it perfectly unfortunately aether rift they made a ploy to push down mid but they entered into the blue side jungle and allowed themselves to be caught out, which is what ultimately ended their game run here. Just need to focus down. I can see there is a lot of pressure from the two remaining Aether Rift members, but that is it. It's the win for 16-bit, and I believe that is the tournament win for them overall. I think they took the finals 3-1 over Aether Rift here, so congratulations to our Korean team. Okay, um... What did you guys think? I'd love to hear what you guys thought about that in the um, in the description below. I, I would obviously do more, but uh, I think I need some better quality footage in some of the games to get through them. But if you guys enjoyed that and you think that it was uh, a good explanation of tactics, please drop me uh, a comment down below because I really enjoy doing this. This is what I do for a living, by the way, for PC. Um, and what I did for Vainglory for many years. So if you guys liked it, I'd just love to hear your, your feedback. It would be great. Obviously, doing it by myself is hard because I'm doing all of the talking when usually you'd have someone else to talk to but uh, if you like the way that i, I kind of discuss the game then I'd, I'd love to hear that's great thanks guys